Good afternoon, everybody. So we have dealt with this poisonings, benzodiazepine poisoning, barbiturate poisoning, opioid poisoning, alcohol poisoning. All these poisons we have dealt with in, in individual topics. But we need to read them again. Just it will be a revision class for you. Okay, antidotes and their remedies. So what is this poisoning? Poisoning is poison is a harmful substance which when comes in contact with the living beings produces abnormal effects on health, which are ingested in a toxic concentration. Okay, that point we need to remember when they are ingested in a toxic concentration, maybe physical exposure or ingestion or intravenous administration. Anything can be possible. So what are the sources of this poisoning? It can be chemical toxin, insecticides, pesticides, agricultural people. What they do? If they are not getting good crop, they get depressed, they consume this pesticides or insecticides. That is what commonly seen. What will sister do without good sleep in the night? She will administer instead of ranitin, morphine, two ampules, patient will die. Hmm? Two or three ampules. If the dose is not maintained correctly, if they the drug which is used for therapeutic purpose can become toxic purpose. So snake venoms, they can also lead to toxic effects. So major poisonings which we come across day to day life are paracetamol poisoning 10 to 15, million, 15 grams, it can be poisonous. Paracetamol poison will, will be more common in children because this paracetamol metabolism may not be well developed and that glutathione which is involved in this metabolism that can be deficient in children and uh, it can lead to poisoning. Paracetamol aspirin they have similar hepatic metabolism. Benzodiazepines they can they have very wide therapeutic range but still there is chances that the patient may think that the sleeping pills uh, can cause death but not frequently so because benzodiazepines have more therapeutic range even the 10 tablet consumption may not lead to severe fatal toxicity. Anticonvulsants if they are used in toxic concentration like fentoin, carbamazepine, they can lead to poison. So other poisonous substances are petroleum distilleries, yes if you consume petrol, diesel, uh, liquid paraffin, uh, jelly, all these things, what are the petroleum products you know, they can cause problems. Natural toxins, yes mushrooms are used as a, uh, vegetables nowadays but there are some toxic mushrooms, if they are not identified correctly, they can lead to poison. Industrial chemicals, they can also lead to poisoning. Toiletries like uh, those which used for uh, cleaning purpose, if they are consumed, they can lead to poison. Household products and also agrochemicals. So what are the general measures we need to take? General measures is first to ABC, airway, breathing, circulation, all these things should be maintained. And what supportive care we can take? First is circulation, circulation airway, correct hypoxia, we can give oxygen or make the airway patent. If there are secretions, we need to suck the secretions, we will make the airway patent. Once the airway is made patent, we should secure a IV line, okay. We, we have to go for the blood pressure measurement. If it is not normal or less, we can go for a securing IV line starting them with the IV fluids may be RL or normal saline initially. Then, if the patient is not diabetic, we can go for DNS. And uh, if the patient is having this uh, hypothermia, hypothermia, it is more common in children. Okay, babies, if they are uh, having some disease, they can go for hypothermia or hyperthermia. Both are dangerous in babies. Hypothermia, we need to keep the baby in the warm condition or in the radiator and if it is hypothermia we can give this mopping 
so that the temperature is decreased. We need to control seizures. Okay, if it is benzodiazepine or bar bicarbonate bar poisoning, they can lead to seizures, opioid poisoning, or alcohol withdrawal. All these conditions, the patient can have seizures. So, in order to control seizures or status symptomaticus, we can go for injection diazepam and other drugs. If the patient is comatose, he is not able to speak. Okay, he is in coma. He is not able to speak. Attendants are uh, not knowing what has happened. We can think of giving dextrose, oxygen, naloxone, and thymine. Dextrose can help you if the patient has gone for hypoglycemia. Oxygen will help if the patient was in a uh, some uh, fire accident has there and he has consumed lot of carbon monoxide. Our oxygen can help. Naloxone can help if the person has consumed lot of opioids. And thymine can help in patient who has gone for alcohol intoxication. So we need to monitor pulse rate, blood pressure, ECG and oxygenation maybe like 4 to 5 meters and generalized status. GCS stands for Glasgow Coma Scale. Okay, if the patient is high in coma, we can assess this. General measures are first we need to decrease the absorption. Decrease the absorption means we need to remember organophosphorus poisoning if it is the pesticide is spilt on his cloths on his body we need to remove their cloths and prevent the further exposure because organophosphorus poisons they can be absorbed from the skin and mucous membrane also and other is increasing the elimination decrease the absorption may be in the form of gastric lavage also if it is a non corrosive poisoning we can go for gastric lavage also at least we can prevent the uh, poison which is there in the stomach from further absorption maybe by, maybe by giving a emetic agent sodium salt water or other emetogenic agent can be given so that the person vomits out whatever the poison is there then in other processes increasing the elimination and the later next measure will be giving a specific antidote if the antidote is available. So MS is stomach wash, it is given post diuresis, it is tried in cases of barbiturates. Okay, post alkaline diuresis, we give it in barbiturate poisoning. Barbiturates are acidic substances. Do you remember barbiturates? Can you name them? Phenobarbiton, pentobarbiton, all these things, thiopental sodium, all these are barbiturates. So if there is poisoning with barbiturates, we can go for this post alkaline dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis can also be tried. Hemodialysis, or again, this can be tried in barbiturate poisoning. Hemoperfusion, exchange transmission. In most of the poisonings where antidotes are not available, we can go for this hemodialysis, hemoperfusion, and exchange transmission. So fluid and electrolyte balance maintenance is very important because when we are doing this diuresis process or the person is uh, unconscious maybe the person has uh, had severe diarrhea in these conditions we need to take care of the electrolyte balance once the patient comes to the OPD or casualty we can send the blood take a sample of the blood and send it for blood gas ratios okay and also for this electrolyte levels if they are not good we can go for this bring a lactate primary therapy for a specific antagonism what we need is direct chemical antagonism acid base acid base means example barbiturate, barbiturate poisoning we are using a alkaline antidote alkaline diuresis we are using okay uh, like uh, uh, heparin we have protamine sulfate highly acidic and highly basic thing and uh, receptor competition like uh, for example nolorphine in morphine overdose atropine or phosphorus they can also be there histamine adrenaline these are all physiological antibodies blockade of the receptors that cause toxic effects for example in atropine Atropine and organophosphorus poisoning, glumazolidine, benzodiazepine poisoning. 
but in barbiturates we do not have an antidote we should go for hemodialysis for benzodiazepines we have an antidote that is flumazenil so restoration of the normal function it can be by use of the direct opposite action and uh, in barbiturates for example cns depression is there we can go for cns stimulation with the help of amenophilins so here is a list of specific antidotes okay so if this drug is poison we have specific antidotes for all the poisons we do not have but for some poisons we have this okay for paracetamol the antidote is nstyl 16 opioid opioid poisoning we have naloxone nalorphine okay nalbefin all these things are there iron for iron poisoning we have iron chelating agent desfloxacin heparin it is an anticoagulant if it is used in excess we can go for protamine sulfate cyanide poisoning cyanide sulfate we need amyl nitrate sodium nitrate or sodium thio sulfate and now it is we have liver one hydroxy cobalamin for the same purpose theophylline and caffeine both those we can go for esmolol theophylline and caffeine these are central uh, nervous system stimulants are there and also they can go for tachycardia arrhythmias and all esmolol is a short ultra short acting beta blocker which can decrease the cardiac side effects atropine you know what are the side effects of atropine dryness blindness okay mad mad uh, mad as hell all serious effects everything is there it can be counteracted by our piso stick bean which is a piso stick bean is it prevents the metabolism of acetylcholine that means what polyesterase inhibitor okay so curare poisoning we can use neostigmine arsenic poisoning we can use dimer caprol for lead we have calcium disodium irritate streptokinase and fibrinolytics if they are in used in uh, in excess we have epsilon amino caproic acid insulin is excess is the person can go for hypoglycemia so we need to use 20% dextrose or glucose in intravenous fluids digital is where do you use this drug digital is where it is used it is used in congestive cardiac failure okay so in those conditions we need, if it is used in excess it can we need to use digoxin specific antibody fragments so methanol it is a contaminant for ethyl alcohol methanol so uh, local uh, arax what they prepare it contains methanol and if it is used we need we have specific antidotes like uh, uh, alcohol dehydrogenase inhibitor that is fomipazole okay and ethanol is used as a treatment here which can bypass the metabolism of methanol carbon monoxide i told in fire accidents the person consumes a lot of carbon monoxide there we need to give 100% oxygen nitrates the antidote is methylene blue warfarin if it is used uh, what can happen it uh, blocks the vitamin k dependent clotting factors so if it is used in excess and there will be lot of bleeding tendencies in order to prevent the warfarin induced bleeding we need to go for vitamin k injections so paracetamol over dosage like 10 to 15 grams of dose in order it is poisonous 10 to 15 grams means how many tablets approximately 3 sheets or 30 tablets it will be poisonous so the drug of choice here is nstyle cysteine what it does nstyle cysteine it is partially replenishes the glutathione stores so glutathione it is a antioxidant enzyme present in the liver which helps in detoxifying this paracetamol 
and once this NSR stress stream is used, it helps in replenishing of the glutathione stores and prevents the toxic metabolites from binding into cellular constituents. So it is it effectively prevents the hepatotoxicity. Only thing is it should be given as early as possible within eight hours. Barbiturate poisoning, we do not have an antidote. Okay. The specific antidote for barbiturate poisoning is not there. So we can go for symptomatic treatment. So in barbiturate poisoning, we can go as it is an acidic poison, we can go for alkaline diuresis. Okay, and uh, the fatal dose here is 6 to 10 grams. We can go for this stomach wash with activated charcoal to prevent the further exposure. Then if the patient is severely, uh, si patient has severe symptoms like uh, mental depression, all the signs are there, we can go for the hemodialysis. So benzodiazepine poisoning, there are very less ch chances that the, it becomes fatal and the patient the chances of death in these poisonings are very less because we have a specific antidote here and the therapeutic margin is very wide. If even the patient consumes more than 5 tablets up to 10 tablets, the patient will not die. Only symptoms of CNS depression will be there that can be monitored and uh, antidote will take care of the rest of the symptoms. So the drugs which are commonly used are for sedative purpose, these are diazepam, lorazepam, midazolam, okay, and uh, we know that it has wide therapeutic margin and overdosage are less and if it is there, it can lead to coma and ataxia and once we use this antidote, the person can be recalled back. Cyanide poisoning, what is important in the cyanide poisoning? compared to the previous poisons like paracetamol, benzodiazepine, barbiturates. What is important here? The patient will die immediately in cyanide poisoning. You remember this? When was it famous? Have you heard of LTTE? Hmm? Sri Lankan terrorists, LTTE. They used to have this cyanide in their locket. So they used to use them regularly and the patient would, would die immediately. So the, here the treatment should be given as early as possible to divert back the patients. What do we, how does this act, cyanide poison? This cyanide uh, binds with cytochrome oxidase enzyme. So inhibition of the cellular respiration. The cellular respiration itself is inhibited. That's why death occurs immediately and blocks the utilization of the oxygen and and this becomes fatal. So this cyanide antidote kit, we have amyl nitrate which is used as inhalational and sodium thiosulfate intravenously and also sodium nitrate. Sodium thiosulfate, what it does, it provides sulfur necessary to produce thiocyanate and once this thiocyanate is formed, it is excreted by the kidney. It reacts with this cyanide compound and thiocyanate is formed and which can be excreted easily by the and sodium nitrates, it has a side effect of causing hypotension and methohemoglobinemia. But this methohemoglobinemia, again, it is a to toxic product, but relatively less toxic product than this cyanide. And for, for converting this methohemoglobinemia, you will get to use again methylene blue. And methylene blue will make this methemoglobinemia, methemoglobin to be get excreted. And we have this newer uh, antidote, hydroxycobalamin. There is no intermediate step of this conversion to cyanide into methemoglobin and later to non-toxic product. Directly, the cyanide is rendered non-toxic by this hydroxycobalamin. Coming to iron poisoning. Iron poisoning can occur when the patient is severely anemic and we are giving intravenous 
iron preparations like iron sorbitol, citric acid, iron dextran when it is given or overloaded there can be iron poisoning. So management includes the iron chelating agents that is desferioxide and uh, if the patient has taken like iron targets in excess we can go for this gastric lavage and all. Okay, whole bowel irrigation can be helpful if the patient has consumed this oral preparations. Once desperoxyl is used, it chelates the free serum iron in the plasma and forms, forms perioxide and perioxide can be readily excreted. Coming to methylon and ethylene glycol poisoning. These are the toxic products which have formed the uh, part of this alcohol preparations from the local sources okay not from the company and uh, some people in the village they prepare arak locally with not good procedures not a standard procedures where methanol will be synthesized and it is a very bad contaminant and which can kill the patient immediately after the consumption not immediately as much as cyanide but within days or two so treatment is giving ethanol by nasogastric tube, sodium bicarbonate can be used and also hemodialysis which can help in further uh, going to the patient into toxic symptoms. Organophosphorus poisoning, I think all of you know, all of you have written it in the exams. So organophosphorus poisoning, first thing is to prevent the further exposure. After that we need to give an antidote that is atropine it is given at 2 ml or uh, 1 milligram, 2 milligram dosage continuously every 10 to 15 minutes till the, till the signs of atropinization occur. Okay, atropine comes in a uh, small ampule like 0.6 milligram per ml ampule is there. So we give for every 10 minutes 1 ampule, 2 ampule, every 10 minutes it is given till the signs of atropinization are found. And we can also use this pralidoxan in non carbamates okay there are some uh, poisons called as carbamates okay and uh, which belong to this organ phosphorus group where we cannot use this pralidoxan and this pralidoxan how does they act they reactivate this choline esterases okay this choline esterases they are the ones which metabolize this acetyl choline once they combine with this cholinesterase organophosphorus compounds, they set free this cholinesterase. And once this cholinesterase is in the plasma, it can metabolize this organophosphorus. So it is effective, to be effective, this prolidoxin should be given within first 48 hours. Because once this organophosphorus compound has bound to this cholinesterase enzyme, they go changes called as structural changes which is called as aging. Once this aging process has occurred that is like after 48 hours this prolidoxin will not be helpful. So it should be given as early as possible. So initial dose of this prolidoxin is 1 gram IV. Okay then uh, it is needed when there is more severe chance, uh, more severe symptoms and uh, it is not of carbamate poisoning. Carbamate poisons do, uh, are carbaryl and propoxyl. Okay, so this in this case, the site for binding of this organophosphorus is uh, binding of this prolidoxin will not be there. This acetylcholinesterase enzyme it has two sites. Okay, one is anionic site, one is cationic site. This sites will not be free in cases of carbamate poisoning where it can go and bind and release this enzyme. So only atropine is used in carbamate poison. Coming to the most important one but the last slide food poisoning. We may not come across most of these poisons but we will always have chances to go for this food poisoning maybe due to the hotel food or some contaminated food we can go for the food poisoning. So how does the patient presents to you? Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal discomfort, okay, maybe because of the toxins which are released in the stomach. So we need to treat the cause. Okay. So uh, if it is like maybe due to the staff or ears, we can go for 
symptomatic treatments if it is due to salmonella we can go for ciprofloxacin in case of clostridium uh, we can go for antitoxin and also symptomatic treatment if it is due to streptococcus it, we can go for penicillin e coli we can go for ciprofloxacin and if, uh, it may be due to chemical toxins like arsenic and lead we can go for symptomatic treatment the thing is we cannot take this okay the person is vomiting now person is having diarrhea we cannot take the blood samples at this stage and go for this examination so what we do we go for universal management universal management or containing general measure first is securing the IV line we can go for you can see most of the cases we have this ciprofloxacin so we usually go for a combination of uh, aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria so it can be covered by both ciprofloxacin and one belonging to metronidazole or ornidazole or secnidazole usually we have this combination of ofloxacin or ornidazole combination IV it is given two times daily and symptomatic treatment is including this uh, maintenance of airway breathing circulation you know that securing the IV line go for if the patient is having low BP, we can go for the IV fluids starting with RL then go for dextrose normal saline. Other measure is to prevent the further exposure if it is the if the patient has come to you immediately, you can go for gastric lavage, all these things can be done.